This time we're looking at the AC circuit analysis questions starting at level zero. As ever, there is nothing conceptually difficult about these apart from the use of complex numbers to represent the alternating waveforms everywhere. Other than that, all the techniques we use are exactly the same as the ones we used for DC circuit analysis. It's just applying Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws. First question then. We have got a current source here firing 10 milliamps up with a phase of 180 degrees, which you may notice is the same thing as firing 10 milliamps down with a phase of naught, since changing by 180 degrees means turning the signal upside down. And we want to know what the voltage is across the current source. Well, as ever, a voltmeter in these circuits is a theoretically perfect voltmeter. In other words, it has an infinite impedance. Therefore, there is no current flowing through it. Therefore, all of this 10 milliamps must flow through this capacitor here. And we can work out what the voltage across the capacitor must be with that amount of voltage going through it, just using the standard formulas for the impedance of a capacitor. So, the voltage across this capacitor is the current, which is 10 milliamps at 180 degrees, multiplied by the impedance of the capacitor, which is 1 divided by j times omega, which is 2 times pi times 100 kilohertz here, times the capacitance, which is 10 nanofarads. So that, about 1.6 volts at 90 degrees, will be the voltage across this capacitor. And since the current is flowing this way, this will be the higher potential, this will be the lower potential. So the voltage between here and here will be 1.59 at 90 degrees, the voltage from here to here, plus 12 volts at 180 degrees. Fine. I hope you can see there's nothing really conceptually difficult. It's just getting used to using all these complex numbers because all the impedances, currents and voltages are now complex. They have a magnitude and a phase. I'll do a couple more. OK, here we have... In fact, it's exactly the same circuit, it's just drawn differently. We have 10 milliamps at 180 degrees, which must flow through the capacitor because it cannot flow this way because this is an ideal voltmeter and has an infinite resistance. So, all of this 10 milliamps is flowing through this capacitor, which means the voltage across this capacitor is going to be 10 milliamps at 180 degrees times the impedance of the capacitor, which is 1 over j times omega, which is 2 pi times 200 kilohertz this time, times the capacitance, which is 6 nano 8. And that's going to be the voltage across this capacitor. And because the current is flowing this way, this will be the higher voltage, this will be the lower voltage. So the total voltage across this voltmeter will be this 14 volts plus the voltage across this capacitor. So that's just going to be 14 volts. I don't have to type in the phase because it's naught plus x, because x is currently the voltage across this capacitor. Fine, let's see if I can find a different circuit here. Well, this one is asking what the ammeter is supposed to be reading. And here we have a current source here and a voltage source here. Well, the thing about ammeters in these questions is that the ammeter is a perfect ammeter and therefore has a zero impedance. If it has zero impedance, there will be no voltage drop across it, which means that this 16 volts is actually the voltage across this current source and the voltage across this capacitor as well. So we know the voltage across the capacitor, so we can work out the current flowing through the capacitor. And that would just be the 16 volts. I didn't really need to write at zero, but I have done the 16 volts divided by the impedance of this capacitor, which is 1 divided by j times 
on we go. 2 times pi times 200 kilohertz times the value of the capacitor, 220 gigafarads. And I've got to take care with my brackets because I'm using divided bys here. Right, so that is the current that should be flowing through the capacitor going down this way from the higher voltage to the lower voltage. So that will be the current flowing along here. Well, the current through the ammeter must be the current flowing into here minus the current flowing up there, which is one milliamp. I've just worked out the current flowing along here. So if I subtract one milliamp, I must get the current flowing through this ammeter. It's just X minus one milliamp. No need to type at zero, but I could if I wanted to. And so on. Takes a bit of getting used to all the complex numbers, and you do have to be careful with your brackets because you are going to be dividing by one divided by j omega c. If in doubt, put the brackets in. Other than that, there's not a lot here that should trip you up. Good luck.